Hey guys, in this video, we're taking a look at Ableton Live's vocoder plugin, which sounds like this. this is so the way the vocoder works is that there's two audio signals that get fed in. You have the modulator and the carrier. So in the example of the synth with the microphone, the microphone or my voice in this case is the modulator and the synthesizer acts as the carrier. And then what happens is that each signal gets run through a series of bandpass filters and a bandpass filter just isolates a small subset of frequencies. So if you slice up the kind of frequency spectrum in a bunch of different bands, you effectively get the ability to get the volume of all the different sections, almost like having a, a large graphical EQ. So then the idea is that you wanna grab the frequency characteristics of the carrier, like the synthesizer, and combine it with the amplitude characteristics of the modulator, or my voice in this case. So in Ableton Live, the way it works is that you place the vocoder plugin on the modulator signal track. So that's why in this case, if I want my microphone or my voice to be the modulator, I take the mic channel and I add the vocoder plugin to that. And then to select the carrier signal, which is the second signal, the one that has the frequency characteristics, you pick that from the drop down here and you have a bunch of different modes. So if you first load a vocoder plugin without changing anything, by default, it'll be set to noise. You can hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. But there's no discernible frequency because white noise covers the entire frequency spectrum. When you engage noise, you get this X, Y pad where the X axis is kind of the downsampling of the voice, of the noise, and the Y axis is the density of the noise. So you can play with that here. And the next one in line is external and this allows you to run any external signal so any signal in Ableton Live as your carrier and that's what we've been doing with the synthesizer so once you select external here you can pick which of your tracks you want to assign and in this case I was using my Synthesizer. Sometimes when you run an external signal, you'll lose some of the high end. So if you want to normalize the signal, you can hit this enhance button. And you'll get a slightly different characteristic. The next one in line is modulator. And what happens here is that it actually uses the same signal for both the modulator and the carrier. So you almost get like a resynthesis effect of using the vocoder like a standalone effect plugin without having to rely on an external signal. You can hear my voice coming through the vocoder and I don't need another signal to trigger it. And now I can play with things like the format knob here and get different kind of effects like pitching up or pitching down. And then finally, the last type of carrier is pitch tracking. So there's a built-in monophonic oscillator inside the vocoder. So if you set it to pitch tracking, that oscillator will try to track the signal of the modulator and then use that as the carrier. So this is what it sounds like. It's trying to find the pitch of my voice. And if you want to limit the frequency range of the oscillator that's tracking, you can set this high and low frequency so we can turn this up. Turn this up all the way here and maybe see what's going on. And then here we can adjust the pitch of the oscillator by bringing it up. And then you can pick the waveform of that oscillator to a pitch voice. So you can sound like a robot or you can sound like this. So at the bottom here, the unvoice knob sets the volume of uh, an additional noise oscillator that is used to resynthesize the sound for sounds that don't really have a clear pitch like F and S. And then I can bring this up. You can see that bringing it up here. And then we have the sensitivity knob here, which determines uh, how sensitive it is for the noise to come in here. So that noise could help accentuate some self sounds. And then fast and slow determines how quickly it transitions from the unvoiced to the voiced one. All right, so now we get to the middle section here where you have these bouncing bars. So if you remember at the beginning how I talked about the vocoder running the modulator and the carrier through a set of bandpass filters, every bar, vertical bar here represents one band of that filter bank. And you can adjust the volume by painting in here these little yellow lines. So at each different band, you can kind of sculpt it, almost like setting an EQ. And then if we go to the bottom here, you can actually choose how many of these bands you want. So you can go as low as four and as high as 40. So obviously the more bands you have, the better the quality of the signal, but obviously it'll take more CPU power. So you kind of want to balance those. 
So let's try out the extreme. So at four bands, we get this really kind of lo-fi signal. I can bring it up here. Slightly better signal. Even better signal. This is the best signal we can get. And then down here, you can set the general range of the kind of spectrum that you want to slice up in these bandpass frequencies. So this is the highest quality you can get. You get 40 bands and then the range is 20 to 18 K. So you're almost getting the full audio spectrum. And now if we listen to it, we get a slightly different quality. And of course you can go very lo-fi. You can bring all the ways down. Over to the right here, we have a bandwidth setting that goes from 10% all the way to 200%. And this determines the bandwidth of every single band. So if you remember, a bandpass filter just isolates a range of frequencies. So as you set the band to lower percentage, you are getting closer and closer to narrowing down on a single frequency. And if you set it to 200, you get higher and higher. This is a sound of the vocoder. And if I lower the band, what you hear what it sounds like. And if I bring it up, then we get more than 200%. All right, so below that we have a switch between precise and retro. In precise, every bandpass filter has the same bandwidth and amplitude. In retro, you get sort of subtle variation between the different bands and amplitudes. This is the precise version. Next to that, we have a gate parameter. So the gate can set a threshold for how loud the signal has to be before it's registered by the bandpass filter. So by default, this is infinity. And if we bring it up, it's almost like the same And then the level here will boost and cut the overall level of the vocoder. So the depth knob here determines how much of the amplitude envelope following of the modulator is used to change the signal of the carrier. So for a classic vocoding, you want to leave this at 100%. If you set it to zero, then it discards the amplitude of the modulator completely. And then below the depth, we have an attack and a release knob. So again, because there's an envelope following going from the modulator to the carrier, here you can determine how fast it reacts to the changes of the modulator. So we can make it like this, and then I can bring the attack, which kind of smooths out the attack a little bit. And then if you want to shift the frequencies of all the different carrier filter banks, you can use the format knob here. So this is the default, and if I bring it up, Up here, you can switch how the signals are processed. So in mono, both the modulator and carrier are processed in mono. In stereo, the modulator is processed in mono, but is fed through the carrier and stereo. And then the left, right uses both stereo for both. And then finally, at the bottom, you have a dry, wet knob. So of course, I can blend in my original voice here. All right, so I've loaded up this drum loop. Let's take a listen to the raw drum loop without any effects. So now if I move this drum into the channel where I have the vocoder loaded, so this is the exact same track I had where I was running my microphone. I didn't change anything. We still have the vocoder and we carry are still set to my synth. But now instead of using my voice as the modulator, this drum loop will be the modulator. So its amplitude characteristics will be imparted on the frequency that's coming from the synth. We're not gonna hear anything until I play the synth. So now take a listen how the synthesizer chords will be heard, but the rhythm will be imparted by the drum loop. So this is pretty cool because now you can take any kind of rhythmic audio loop and use it to almost like gate the synthesizer. And of course now we can play around with all these different settings here so we can add this unvoiced feature. We can reduce the number. All right, the other thing I'm gonna show is how to use a plugin synthesizer. So, so far I've been using a hardware synth. So I'm just gonna create a MIDI track here. And let's just load up an instance of Ableton's analog, just the default preset, nothing fancy. So let's take a listen to the synth on its own. 
So you want something that covers like a wide range of frequencies. So generally like sawtooth with an open filter works best. So I'm going to get rid of my first track here and I'm going to rename this synth. So again, if I go to the vocoder here, set external, and then I can pick my synth here. So now I can go here and demonstrate what happens if you kind of close the filter. Let me add some noise, see what happens. Let me just load another drum loop here. All right, so now what I've done is I've loaded up another track and I've set it to my channel where this microphone is coming from. But now I'm gonna use the microphone as the carrier, not the modulator. So in this case, the drum kit itself is gonna be the modulator and my voice is gonna be the carrier. So we're gonna be using the frequency characteristics of my voice with the amplitude characteristics of the drum and combine those together. And to make things extra spicy, I'm gonna load an auto-tune effect here. So now if we play it, Alright, so that's it for the vocoder. Hopefully you found this interesting and informative. I'm only just scratching the surface. Obviously you have all the different carrier modes like the noise, the repitching. It's called the vocoder, so it's a bit of a misnomer because it implies that you have to use your voice, but you don't have to. Let me know in the comments below if you come across some unique modulator carrier combination that you want to share with the group. Alright, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next. You've got to go.